Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I am doing a review on ukulele um, on Nintendo Switch, obviously. Now, um, for limited one games, I got this as uh, physical, which uh, I did a box opening on it. You can probably find it on my channel. And I 100% no voice crack. I 100% completed this game. Um, I will probably be speeding up the video right now, so you're, you're probably not seeing the same thing I am, but for right now I'm seeing the Platonic logo, just like going off the screen and the things going off. But um, you will see, um, or have seen, um, my save file, because I linger over it for a second, so I might um, edit it so that you can see that um, on its own, um, unsped up. Um, but you can see, and I'll be able to read it off here in a second, because for me, I'm just going into uh, um, about to press A to go to main. So yeah, I've got 145 UFA pages, uh, 1010 queries, and time 51, 56, 50, something like that. That can't be 51 hours. I haven't played in 51 hours, have I? You know? Holy shit. Anyway, um. But yeah, I'm just going to show off like the early bits of, uh, bit of this. Um, of ukulele and um, you know just uh, get through the first few minutes well actually that's what my intention was and um, I think I recorded for about an hour on accident like I was like hey, I'll pop into ukulele play a few minutes and it was like um, put that uh, into a video throw some um, you know what put my voice over it talk about the game and uh, how much I liked it and uh, fish bash bosh, job done. I did not realise I was recording for about an hour. Yeah, so that's already a good sign. Like, you know, if you pop into a game and only need to play it for a few minutes, and you end up playing it for over an hour, or pretty much an hour, then you're definitely, uh, you know, looking at a good game there. Um, so yeah, ukulele. It is based. It's, it's uh, based off Banjo-Kazooie, which was made by Rearware, and uh, the ukulele was made by Playtonic, which is uh, full of um, older people who, people who used to be in Rearware, and made the original Banjo-Kazooie. Also, um, ukulele 2, maybe, please? Please, Playtonic? I, I, I wanna... Right, right, so... You have seen me play Super Mario Galaxy 2 and I was like, and I had the like running kind of joke where I, go, where I went, where if I saw a coin I'd go, ooh shiny, ooh shiny, and I would always like try and collect every coin that I saw, unless I was like doing, this, doing something really, trying to do something really fast. And it, um, Banjo Kazooie is basically where I got the, my love of collecting just shiny things. And if you love collecting shiny things like I do, Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, and Ukulele are some of the best games uh, you, for that. And um, one of the best parts about all three of those games is they're made by British people. And there's a lot of British words in this, like, um, that you won't usually see. And it's just like, you don't really think about this, but these are British words and you don't typically see them in games because they're usually developed by a uh, by like Nintendo or so company like Nintendo or Sony where they're Japanese so they won't really use British words and the Microsoft and the, they're based in America so they won't use British slang for the most part like you, you might see one or two British words because uh, America is basically if England and Germany had a baby and it was overweight um, but yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, that's a very basic simplification of what America is like. It, it's basically a mixing pot of different cultures, but in English and German culture is the really two main cultures that have influenced America through the, throughout the years from where I know. Um, and uh, yeah, it. It, you just like you learn just a character go oi, and it's just like yeah. I, I, you don't really hear characters go oi too often because that is a very British thing to do when you want to get someone's attention. It's just like oi, you, 
you never really hear, just hear that, and it's and it's kind of refreshing because it is. I, I don't usually just like base my opinion off a game based off you know what uh, the character skin color is or um, nationalities of the characters and uh, all that, but it is just nice to hear um, British words because. It just makes me feel more at home. You know, it makes it just sort of gives gives you that sort of uh, um, feeling of you know more personal. It kind of like makes it a little bit more personal. Like you hear these words uh, um, pretty much every day in it, almost every day in England, um, and they are really common words for Brit English people to say, but. When and you sort of kind of miss that when you're playing a game, like, like I said, it's not really. I'm not gonna hate a game because it doesn't have. Oi, what are you doing? Or you know, kind of going, Oi, what are you doing in a really thick British accent? Or like, hello, governor. Want to pop over for some tea and biscuits? No, I'm not gonna hate a game because it doesn't have a bunch of British slang in it, but it's just like nice. That it's in there, um, it, and it uh, um, definitely for somebody like me who loves their country. And it, uh, um, while the British accent isn't my favourite, it's actually my third favourite. Uh, maybe second. Um, you know, first is Irish. I love the Irish accent, and second is Scottish. And it's all just like fighting with Scottish. The Scottish accent for my favourites because I really do like the Scottish accent, um, but I don't know which one I like more, the Scottish one or the English accent. But I, I adore um, the Irish accent. Like that is above and beyond my favourite accent. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, you just get the the fact that it, you know if you're English. It's just gonna give you. It's just gonna give you that, which you give you that uh, language, you know, the British slang and everything that you can, all the games don't really give you. And um, all in all, ukulele, um, it's just hilarious because um, uh, um, just like in Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie, a lot of the comedy is based off. British comedy, we use what this thing, this thing that is called banter for all you people who don't know, and surprisingly, it's not. Apparently, it's not super common knowledge. Like, um, I know Mojang didn't know about banter when they invited the Yogs cast to um, one of the earliest like Minecon. So, yeah, but basically, what banter is is we take the piss out of people basically and laugh, even at ourselves. Um, we just you know, you know that's that's how we form a comedy and. Um, a lot of people will say that Banter has pretty much kept the UK together um, just because we can point at each other and ourselves and laugh at our shortcomings and uh, um, I guess that's pretty much a, you know built a sense of just like um, you know well I don't know I guess it just helps keep us together and you know and uh, the fact that we can just like freely talk about each other and just laugh about it just helps us uh, not kill each other basically um and it, uh, um yeah is it bad? there is quite a bit of banter here mainly from Lady, um which is the kazooie of the game um which both characters did use quite a bit of banter um, where they would uh, const they will constantly make fun of a character's appearance or um, mannerisms for it as a joke, and it, um, not and they're not to be not to be mean, but as a joke, and that is pretty much banter. Banter at, at the end of the day, you make fun of somebody for something, but uh, not to be mean, but you know as a joke, and uh, it is ref it is kind of refreshing because. 
You get, again, because there's no games made by British people or British companies, you don't really see banter a lot to, in the popular media. Like, in British, you'll see in British movies and British video games from time to time, but other than that, you don't really see banter because it's a very uniquely you very unique to the UK really I don't know I know it's to England I don't know about um, Scotland and uh, Ireland but I do know banter is a ve is very unique to England like it's we're not the only people who do it but it's we're the only like country who have it ha he has like properly adopted it as like our main form of comedy and what we're pretty much known for in the you know when you, when you talk about British comedy um and it, uh, sure, it's an acquired taste that you could say, um, because not a lot of people really like to just like be made fun of, even if it's not to be mean to them. Um, but it is still a popular form of comedy, and it is still nice to see represented in this game. Um, now, I did have, I did have a few moments of like being gay and we have this game because I use my, what is essentially a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller in the shape of a GameCube controller. And it, um, on that, it has the ZL and ZR button switch, so the L and R on the bottom and ZR, L and ZR on the top, uh, which is opposite to the normal Switch controllers. Which means that then um, sometimes it can, uh, when I'm playing a game, uh, it'll uh, be a bit, the it'll be a bit uncomfortable to play from time to time because uh, um, those four buttons are switched around. But and that did sort of happen here as well, um, and also the X and Y being in it and B being in different places. I was in it. That wasn't too much trouble, but maybe if you said, bear, bear that in mind, if you want to play this with a GameCube controller or GameCube shape controller, that is something you need to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, uh, all in all, it is a really good controller. Like, um, again, I did have a few rage moments because I was using my GameCube controller, but um, if I wasn't using my GameCube controller, I wouldn't have been raging as much. Um, I would have probably had a much ple more pleasant experience, so you could say that all of my anger was um, self-inflicted. Um, so, let's talk about the, game, uh, the collectibles. So, you have pages which are used to unlock and expand worlds. And uh, um, some are fairly simple to get, some are more complex to get, um, but for the most part, I haven't really have had that much trouble with pages. Um, the pages that, uh, well, that uh, I can think of that cause me particularly particular stress. Kratos' uh, boss, there was a boss battle with Kratos, which I, d I don't show him off in this video because, again, I was, uh, at, you know, I was already going on without even realising it, so I didn't bother showing him off. Um, but uh, um, there's a boss battle with him, and that was very memory heavy, and it was a long, long battle. So um, it might, eventually, my um, eventually you would just get a bit tired of it. So yeah, that boss battle went on way too long. Like yeah, it was a good idea, and it, um, it uh, was uh, definitely uh, um, it's definitely something I would like to see like. Return in a sequel, just a bit different and better, and nowhere near as long. Like, um, each one of his phase of the phases of that boss battle, in my opinion, could be an entire boss battle, pretty much. Um, just because it, you basically hit him three times, I think it was, and uh, then you would go on to another phase, and you hit him another three times. Another phase, another three times, another phase, and again, all this while you have limited health, and there, and there was no way to regain health, and there is, and no matter what you do, there is no way to get regain health in that boss battle. Um, so yeah, that boss fight was way too long. It could have easily been done with being shorter, um, and it would have been a lot better. Um, Second thing that pops up in my head. It's not a single thing, but a group of things. Uh, Rextro's Arcade. 
fuck me that they were bad. Like, Kratos and the Vextro kind of feel like afterthoughts. Like, they were building the main game and it's like, how about we add these? And it's like, but we don't really have any good ideas for minigames. It's like, eh, it doesn't matter, we'll just fill them in. And it pains me to say that, but they do. Kratos isn't that bad because, you know, his, uh, he, he's really simple and uh, um, while some may take a few retries, um, you know, it's not really going to be that bad. But Retro! Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not going to spoil any of the mini games for you, but if you're not, go if you're not going for 100%, skip Retro's arcades. You have to, first you have to find the retro coin, then you give him the retro coin, then you get a one pagey for beating the game, and you get another pagey for beating the high score. And, if you can, and I think I actually managed to do both at the same time one time. And the, the, each mini game paid me to do. And there was this one especially bad one where you're running around and you had to collect, um, you know, gold, silver, and bronze quillies and try and get a high score. And quite often, there would be uh, a point in several times where I couldn't even see what was in front of me or what, what, what my character was doing because it was covered over by a, uh, something above, uh, above them. So, you know, that was frustrating. And then it was just not fun. They're just not fun to play. Like, if you go for 100%, I would leave them until last, you know, just find the play coin, maybe find the play coin, but, you know, just leave them till last. Like, you can, uh, on that, or until you get stuck. Then, you know, just don't, just avoid them at all costs. Um, but yeah, um, Quillies. Now, Quillies, we're more, apart from Rexus Arcade, we're uh, more, uh, Pages were usually more difficult to and uh, to get than a PG, um, because they was they're smaller and they don't make as uh, much noise, if any noise at all. Um, uh, because I don't think they make any noise today, but I could be wrong on that. But um, they can easily be hidden away, and the um, as you get one later on after I expand this world and I do the triple night one, it's underneath uh, this. Um, Teetering uh, bridge, and I almost forgot about it this time as well. And uh, I got, and it's underneath it, and it's very hard to see. Um, it's only through luck that I saw a bit of it poking out, and that I remembered about it. And I was like, oh, get that, and you know, it's not escaping me this time. Um, so yeah, there's um, the pages. And once you have um, I completed the game, so going uh, all of the pages and all the quillies, I do believe. Um, a third collectible unlocks called, and I think they're called Crystal School. They're basically Crystal Schools, but they're called something else, like Pirate Treasure or something like that. And they, do, they don't make any noise. And the tonic for finding, uh, and I'll talk about tonics in a minute, but the tonic for finding rare things does not work for them. And it, uh, and they are quite hard to find. Um, uh, so yeah. Um, so definitely, um, what I would do, I would, if I were you, if you're 100% now, go into a world, find everything that I could, and move on to the next world, or find everything that I could, and uh, maybe when you beat, well, maybe before moving on to the next world, um, go onto a website and look up um, any missing pages, or any other missing pages, and how to get them, and it's like, okay, I can't get this until I get this power because there's literally um, one like pagey in this level that you can't get into like the very end of the game. Um, so yeah, there's a good bit of backtracking in this game. Um, but yeah, um, just do that and continue on from world to world and get backtrack whenever you need to. Um, and I got, I remember getting this um, one uh, well. In the casino world, there was this one bit thing I needed to do. I never found out what I needed to do, even though I did it. I just didn't know what I did. I was just stood there trying to figure out what to do and something like that. And I can't even remember what I did to get it to happen. But um, something happened and, it, and I got everything. So, I'm like, well, I'm not complaining. Um, and, uh, yeah. So... 
Yeah, definitely, you're definitely gonna want like a wiki open or something to, to help you with that. Um, well, ah yes, um, trout, no, yeah, tonics. Um, you can see I've unlocked all the tonics that I've 100 percent in this game. Um, but yeah, tonics they give you certain boosts. And some are really good, not, like there's one that gives you an extra butterfly, which is an, basically an extra hit point. And there's one that gives you more energy, which is definitely good if you want it to, to uh, you know, go around and, uh, and uh, you, uh, so your power's a bit longer. And there's one that uh, you unlock, I can't remember exactly how, I think you have to 100% the game. And um, like you can see, oh, I don't know, you're speaking, so you probably won't be seeing it right now. Um, but um, it'll give you free butterflies instead of uh, um, whatever the number is. So yeah, de um, definitely, um, that is definitely a thing. Um, uh, so if you want to go through the game on like hard mode, or hard mode, or whatever you want to call it, then yeah, there's that. There is that. Um, Now, what else is there? Mm, uh, so yeah, I think I pretty much covered Ah, yes, trousers. Trousers, he gives you moves. One free move per level, and uh, to get to the level, and then uh, the other moves you have to pay for. Uh, I think it goes from, from like 30 to 50 to 150 or 100, and then 158. Or, or I can't remember exactly in what increments they go, but they. Um, they go oh, go up, um, but yeah, um, right. Let's talk about what, how the game looks because this is that is obviously going to be a big concern for anybody who's like going to get this on the Switch because like, does it look good? Does it run well? And yeah, I don't know exactly what the FPS is because I haven't uh, bothered to look in the open counter. But I've never really experienced uh, like a lot of lag from what I can remember. Um, I've never just like been playing through the game and just had the game even suffer on me, so it is uh, quite nice. And it do actually does look quite good. Like I would bet money that if you come come back to this game in a few years and. Uh, you know, like maybe in like one of, in like two or three year console generations, and uh, when everything is like streaming and you know, all that, and you uh, come come back to the Switch and you look at this game, you probably just be like, yeah, this game still looks quite good because it is heavily stylized, and so uh, the the uh, how the game looks will hold up for a while, and uh, yeah. It is uh, definitely, yeah, a, a good uh, looking game, and it, it runs well. So yeah, and I've not really noticed any graphical glitches or any real glitches in it um, throughout my playthrough. Uh, well, yeah, play through when right, I played through it. Um, but yeah, it is. Like I said, it is one of the most it is one of the most fun games I ever played in quite some time. Um, but yeah, I definitely would suggest picking this up if you love collecting things. Um, and uh, it's uh, been a while since I, I got to play, play a good collection one because um, game developers sort of stopped making them after like the N64 and PlayStation 1. Uh, while there was still some around, like um, Spyro and it, um, Crash Bandicoot was still around after the N64 and all that, Collectifon, you know, they just, Collectifon still just sort of dropped off and it, uh, um, went down in popularity, so it's nice to see a new Collectifon being made. Um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, it's nice to see that play that um, Platonic or the people who used to work at Rare Rare can still make a good fun game. Um, uh, as well as a, a handful of shitty mini games. Um, but yeah, um, if 
I would suggest to somebody, you know, if someone came up to me, how would you suggest playing through ukulele? Um, I would suggest um, having the uh, um, energy tonic equipped at all times, because that's, uh, that's always nice, because it, gets, it means you can travel fast a little bit further, which is always nice. Um, and the, the, to, like I said, go for the pay, all the pages that you can get in the world. And if you get stuck, look up the you know pages that you've missed, uh, and the, the, um, you know get the ones you can. And if you, and if you can't get any more pages, move on to the next world. Um, because it's uh, um, a bit uh, annoying when you because you go into a world and then you don't know how many pages there are in that world and uh, um, you know how many you need. But yeah, if you're going for one hundred percent, well, I wouldn't generally suggest that. I would, uh, uh, definitely suggest like get, trying to get all the pages and everything, but if you're not too bothered about going for all the pages, the game is very forgiving on pages, so you don't really need to um, go for all of them, but yeah. Um, just get, get all the ones you can find, and then if you can't find any more, just move on to the next world and maybe do some backtracking later when you get stuck on another world or something. Um, avoid Rextro at all costs, and Maybe think about doing Kratos, um, Kratos, um, if you feel like doing him, but um, there's only one time you would really need to do him, and that's for the boss battle, and I don't even know if you have to do all the boss battles. Um, but yeah. Um, and will I be doing a let's play of this, um, just for anybody who might be interested in that? Maybe I might do it one day, but probably not anytime soon. Maybe like um, one one year when you you play two is uh, um, revealed and announced for the Switch, I might uh, um, you know give it a quick playthrough and then do a playthrough of you play two when that comes out. Um, other than that, um, I probably won't be uh, doing a let's play this anytime soon, just because while I do love it, it is a big game and takes a long time to do. Um, and, uh, it's, and I would definitely say it's perfect for the Switch because um, you can just hop onto it and collect a few pages and save and quit and then just go back to wherever you were doing and then hop back on whenever you're done, done what you're doing and uh, get a few more pages. Uh, or Quillies or whatever, um, and yeah, it definitely lends itself well to that yes, way of gaming. Um, but yeah, um, I would definitely suggest picking this up. Uh, maybe think about 100%ing it, but if you're not really not overly bothered about 100%ing it, you know, just. Uh, um, get most of the pages, avoid play cartos for the most part. Uh, if you're not, if you don't like his stay, his, uh, mi his little like mini games, I don't find them too bad. Um, and then, um, yeah, just the game. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.